So day trading, if I had to start all over again, I would do a few things differently. Let me tell you why. So my worst mistake when starting to trade were mainly trading stock without news. This was a hard thing to understand because there's a lot of random result in trading. So what I'm trying to say is a day you're going to see a wedge, you're going to buy that wedge and it's going to have a nice breakout or breakdown. Then you think you did something right. But in reality, it wasn't really the trade that worked. It was just that the market was going up on that day or the market was going down. And this was even more accurate when you're trading high beta stock like Nvidia, Tesla, AMD, all of these kind of names that are highly correlated to the SPY and also the QQQ. When I stopped that, I guess it stopped the bleeding. So what was working kept on working, but the losses were just less and less. So it kind of like skewed the profit curve. And that was just like the main difference. So if I could have avoided that when starting, I would have probably saved two years of just burning cash pretty much. So I learned that because I was trading at a firm at a certain point and I had a mentor there that was just just telling me like to stop doing that. And I didn't really believe him at first, but it took a bit of time. And when you see other guys that are making money and they're just not trading the same stock as you, and then you hear one person tells you that you don't really believe him. When you hear a second person tell you that you still don't really believe him. But when you meet like six or seven profitable traders or like that have been profitable for years, and they're not online personalities or they're not selling courses and they all tell you the same thing and you don't pay them also. So they, they don't have like interest in you making money. They just simply don't care. They all tell you the same thing and you kind of figure out that uh, maybe there's something there and you know, that's when you try to make change and you go like, huh, if I would have done that before, it's about that. By the way, at any point during this video, don't forget to check out the links in the description. I've linked the broker I use, the scanner, and all of that stuff. So let's get back to the video. When I started for so long, I was just looking at the one minute and the daily chart and it worked well, but if you're someone that over trades, the one minute chart is going to be a really tough one because it's like there's so much going on, you know, you're getting so much data, which is which is good. But at the same time, there's like so many trigger or false trigger, because most of the time when you're trading stock with fresh news and the has pattern, you're looking for a candlestick pattern and you're going to have set up on every time frame. So if you're looking at the one minute, you're going to have set up on the one minute time frame, but then you go to a five minute, but there was no setup. Then you look a few minutes later. Now there's a setup on the five minute. You look at a 15 minute chart and then you can see a setup on a 15 minute. So it really depends on how fast you want to be active as a trader if you're looking to just scalp or you're looking really for bigger trades. So what that I came to the conclusion after I guess three and a half, four years is that if I'm looking for like scalp trade or like, you know, breaking news trade, I'm going to look at a two minute chart. The reason why is it's not because I wanted the two minute chart is because the news is going to happen fast. And with that trader, when you put the one minute, it doesn't go back enough in time. So I decided to just put the two minute, which make the chart not like have any bugs or see more historical data, which was just the best thing. But if I'm looking to just trade like a pattern, like a breakout or something like that, it has to be on a five minute chart or 15. Um, that's like the minimum I'll go for. I won't take like a breakout on a two minute pattern just because there's there's too much variance and there's too many false breakouts. I didn't come to that conclusion alone. It, it was like a mix of different people that told me about that. And I didn't really believe it, to be honest, until I saw it, you know, from someone that was having like a clear edge and that would just told me that I had to ditch that, which in a case it's true, but in a certain case, it's not, uh, not really accurate. But I personally prefer the two minute. This is a bit controversial and I made actually a short on YouTube about that and people seem to be angry, which made me laugh because what I said in that short wasn't even a lie. If I would start again, I would really focus on pre-market action and really trade the pre-market the most. The reason why is the pre-market has like really fresh news, right? A lot of news, a lot of press release come out in the pre-market and they normally come out 
at specific time like 7 a.m uh, 7 15 7 30 8 8 15 8 30 8 45 9 so it's like every 15 minutes so if you're looking to trade small cap which is going to be what people i guess on this channel are going to be looking to focus on they're going to come out with like you know news that are going to make them move a lot and then after the first move they create a pattern and then they have either continuation or they fail so you will have stock with like fresh news and then you can look for stock that have the most volume or up the most pre-market and then you look for the one that have continuation a lot of things or a lot of what i say opinion about this is misunderstood because people say it's risky or there's not enough liquidity but the truth is <laughs> There's so much volume a lot of these like small cap have traded already like five six million shares like within the first i guess hours of trading pre-market or the news coming out so there's plenty of liquidity and if you're a, a firm or a fund you can't really have those algo running in pre-market because they don't know or they're not really set up for that they really wait for when the most liquidity is going to be there and this is going to be during the regular trading hours so a lot of these moves are a bit smoother in pre-market or at least they have a bigger expansion a range expansion i would say and then during the day uh, it's still gonna have like great opportunity but it's gonna be sometimes a bit more tricky more algo driven and all that stuff so there's more traps so when you're new if you're just looking for the first continuation pattern in the pre-market i think that would be ideal a gap down and then you're looking for you know a, the next leg of a breakdown or a gap up then you're looking for the next leg of the up move this is what i would really focus i mean i know it's not for everyone but for me this is what has been working the best like this past six months or even probably like a year and apparently people don't agree but that's my personal opinion so this is what i would focus on the most so if i would start again um would i go full-time right away or you know really keep it as a side hustle the logic answer is really to keep it as a side hustle until you're profitable enough to go full-time it doesn't exactly work like that like what i'm trying to say is when you're not profitable yet it's going full-time is going to give you a lot more time in front of the screen you're gonna see a lot more event and every day you're gonna collect new information data and this could be about just news market sentiment you're just gonna have you're gonna be dedicated to one thing and then you you get absorbed by it and you become really like a good learner or fast learner versus somebody that has a full-time job and is just showing up to the market like here and there it's gonna really make your your learning curve like slower like the best thing to do would be to give it a shot full-time for like a few months at least you know like six months but you, you would have to be open to the option of getting a job again and then you know um, have to balance like giving a shot full time going back to a job but trading is tricky even the best trader the most profitable traders i know and these are, are guys that trade for firms they're not necessarily online personality and they made like millions trading and sometimes we talk and they're still complaining like a complete rookie that man they're like man i haven't had a paycheck in like three months but then you go on twitter and uh, everybody's making money every day right reality is it's it's going to be always like a struggle um that you make money for x amount of time everything goes well then it's not necessarily that you're going to lose money but sometimes you're just turning shares you're trading and you're trading but nothing's really click until there's like new event that happened and like this past year like or even i would say 2022 was kind of not ev eventful a lot of traders were just turning shares the whole day then 2023 we had the bank crisis and like had like you know i wasn't making much before but then i had like my multiple best trades or multiple best month in a row and this were able to like sustain me for the rest of the year you have to be there all the time because you don't know when it's going to show up but when you're starting out there's no like going full-time or you know staying part-time and treat it as a side hustle but if you've been full-time for uh, like years or like example five six years i don't see why not going part-time or if you're able to get like a good stream of income that's there like every day or like on a regular basis and then you could probably go back to trading part-time because you already assimilated or accumulated so much experience that you maybe don't need to show up as much every day but uh yeah so there's there's no right answer for that that's a good question um i'm not currently in any chat room the reason why is I talked to enough trader over the years that you know people that you know we enjoy talking with each other just kept in contact and 
every day you just you know chat with people what they're looking for ask them how they're doing you text on the weekend it's not necessarily like a chat room it's just individual conversation like all mixed together so if there's an important news somebody's gonna tell you hey by the way you know this is a news or hey, this should be your setup if i would start again i would probably have to join a chat room um, i don't have any affiliation with any of them or anything like that but to at least get in contact with people that are trying to achieve the same thing and in there it's like the typical you're trying to get someone that's a bit better than you you try to help someone that's you know not as good as you and this is really relative because sometimes people that are not good as you are going to perform better in certain market and somebody that's really better than you is going to be in a big drawdown when technically you're, you're doing well so it's, this is relative to the time period that you're talking with these people but what i really think is that you would probably have to like hop on different chat room but understand that the person that runs the chat room doesn't really care about you even if they repost your tweet doesn't really matter <laughs> they, they just don't care and it's not a, a mean thing or they're not necessarily trying to take advantage of you it, it's just it, there's too many people in there that they can really care about everyone right you try to get as much information as you can from that person or understand their style you try to meet as much people like you know chat with people that post maybe chart and all that you stay in contact maybe you move to the next chat room and then you understand what's going on there and then you do the same thing and you repeat the same process all over again and after maybe a year or two then you're going to realize that you're always talking with the same group of people and and these become your trading buddies so there's no like point of paying for a chat room except if there's like something very specific in that chat room it's like somebody that's like an expert in news they have like tools or scan a lot like stuff like that this this could be helpful um because you pay here but you don't have to pay like the software beside but you would probably have to join a chat room if you're starting out to at least meet people so if if i would have to give like one final advice to someone starting out or even to myself when i started out would be to trade really small not for the reason of not losing money which is still a good reason but it's because you don't have an edge and even if someone tells you to trade small you're gonna trade too big and lose too much that's fine that's just part of the the learning curve but if i'm starting out what i would really focus is just build good stats and then look for capital somewhere else so that means like join a prop firm or look for like a backer or something like that then you could scale like much much faster because if you're trying to really build your account and live off it it's gonna to be tough it's gonna to be taxes at the end of the year so even if you started with 25k then you build it to like you know 100k at the end of the year you're gonna to have to give like 30k to the government so then you're gonna go back and then maybe you start the year in a slight drawdown so then you're back to like a 50k account and when you think about it you even haven't took yourself a paycheck yet so what i would focus is build like a good stats and then you know try to join a firm that's gonna at least give you maybe extra buying power or they're gonna at least maybe back you fully like you know they're gonna take the whole risk on you so then the money you have you can just live on it and then you can build yourself a paycheck through the firm and eventually if you have enough saved up you can probably just move on yourself and just trade your personal account and not have to need a backer or anything like that but that would be a, a much much better route to take than just trying to you know take this 1k account and bring it to 2k or 25k to bring it to 50. so if you found value in this video you can like and subscribe and also if you have any question or comment leave them down in the comment section i could go over in my next one peace